the caves of Yanchep, Western Australia. Darkness transformed into light. An occult group gathers to perform an ancient Egyptian rite. The members of the Temple of the Mother worship the goddess Isis. Their leader is an energetic businesswoman who by night becomes the High Priestess, Lavana. My rituals and teachings were passed down to me by my Egyptian teacher, who I first met in Egypt seven years ago. Our first time we met, we spent many, many days in the desert together. He taught me a complete new system to me at the time, although as he spoke and talked to me, I realized it was a system that I had within myself. He awakened my ancient self. There was something about him that was very, very important to me in this life. I knew he was going to guide me, give me the reasons and directions in my life. His teachings came more of a vibration and a feeling from within him. Sometimes we would spend many, many hours in the desert and not one word would pass. It was almost like clairvoyant pictures before my eyes an unveiling of knowledge, of knowing. And most of my teachings with him were this way. Our full moon ritual begins at new moon and everybody within the temple starts their preparation and aligning themselves to the new moon and her energies, to her waxing energies, to her growth. We use our netta as an expression of our openness and our love to the god or the goddess or to life. So in a way we're paying homage to ourselves as well. Magic feeds me. Magic makes me constantly aware of change and I can make change. Magic gives me vitality. Magic's a very positive thing because it's an affirmation every day. I am, I can, I will. Oh, you great shining ones, guardians of fire, we welcome you. Aneta. Aneta. Aneta Rak. Atom. Atom. What I get from magic and working with the Temple of the Mother and Lavana is to realize the joyousness of life, that life's free-flowing, and that life's a very, very precious thing. We get that also from working with uh, children and healing, but we could also get it from the rituals and the dancing, to realize the preciousness of the moment. And really, your life is just a process of moments. So if we can realize the preciousness of the moment and then extend that into our whole life, our whole life can become joyous and free-flowing. stand there and I'm taking on the form of the great mother I, I actually do feel like I am the great mother I don't necessarily feel like I'm a person I actually feel like I'm earth I'm sea I'm everything that's feminine 
and the priest and priestesses before me, as I look into their eyes and they look into my eyes, this is the most incredible openness that one can't have in a mundane world. Hail Isis. Hail Isis. Hail Isis. Hail Isis. I think that uh, humanity is already enlightened, it just has to become aware of it. So the process is to unfold um, the inner spiritual truths, not to create them. Man is not born imperfect. Um, he has to realise his own divinity. And in realising his own divinity, he'll free himself. If it were only facts that mattered, man now knows more about himself than he has ever known. And yet somehow he believes in himself less. There is a gap between what we know and what we feel. Many find that the occult can bridge that gap. It can take us beyond ourselves to the infinite. It gives the gift of joy unto the hearts of men.